Hello friends, welcome to Weathercast. Today I am going to make an educational video on Northeast Monsoon Dynamics. The reason I have taken this up is because uh, we have two monsoon seasons. One is the Southwest Monsoon, another is the Northeast Monsoon. The dynamics of Southwest Monsoon I have already discussed and put up a video uh, on, on my YouTube channel. You can uh, look at that video uh, if you browse through the videos on my channel you will find uh, the southwest monsoon dynamics uh, so i decided that it is also important to present the northeast monsoon dynamics and hence this video but before we uh, get into the south uh, northeast monsoon dynamics i think we should briefly touch upon the southwest monsoon because uh, i feel it has a bearing on the northeast monsoon dynamics how and why i'll try to explain it in this video so the reason I have put up this particular diagram is because this is where the uh, southwest monsoon uh, initiates or starts propagating uh, the uh, the branch of the southwest monsoon hits the south Andaman Sea and that's the starting point of our uh, summer monsoon season. So before uh, I get into the uh, depth just some basics of southwest monsoon. The factors that govern the southwest monsoon are the differential heating and cooling of the land. As we all know, the Tibetan plateau heats up and that leads to a, a kind of a low pressure system over the land and uh, pulls the winds from the Arabian Sea and also Bay of Bengal uh, towards the land. And at the same time, while this is happening, the Tibetan plateau is heating up. The ITCZ also starts moving up because uh, it creates a, a pull effect where the ITCZ now starts moving uh, northwards and uh, that movement is very crucial because the movement of ITCZ overlaps with the monsoon trough and wherever the ITCZ is, uh, is present that monsoon trough is active in that location. And then you also have the tropical easterly jet because of the subtropical ridge that forms uh, at uh, higher levels, we have the tropical easterly jet that uh, moves uh, um, from east to west. And then we also have the Somali jet, which is a, a byproduct of the Mascaran High in the southern hemisphere. Because of the Mascaran High, the Somali jet uh, occurs, and because of the Tibetan plateau heating, uh, the Somali jet is pulled towards the Indian landmass. And it's a jet phenomenon because it is a very strong uh, wind flow and uh, that brings in a lot of westerly moisture flux towards Indian subcontinent. It's a very integral part of the southwest monsoon season. And at the same time, we also have an east Indian coastal current in the Bay of Bengal, which moves from south to north. And what it does is it uh, creates an, uh, an anticyclone anti over the uh, ocean in the Bay of Bengal. And thereby, it ensures that the Bay of Bengal uh, temperatures are above normal so that uh, systems can be produced in the Bay of Bengal. So that is the role of the East Indian, uh, East Indian Coastal Current, which is EICC. And then we also have the IOD and El Nino, which are uh, the synoptic scale uh, systems which govern the southwest monsoon. So this is the basics of the monsoon. And uh, we will talk about whether the same factors that we discussed will be applicable to northeast monsoon. If not, what are the changes? Okay, so the first thing is the ITCZ, it moves north during the southwest monsoon and uh, after the southwest monsoon, because the Tibetan plateau starts cooling uh, in October, the, um, the, south, the ITCZ is pushed down because uh, high pressure is created over the Tibetan plateau region and that kind of pushes the ITCZ towards south. So ITCZ starts moving south during the northeast monsoon season. This is very common and it's a seasonal pattern of the ITCZ. We all know about that. So what are the major differences between the southwest monsoon and northeast monsoon? One of them is the winds. During uh, the uh, June, July, August, September period, the winds are uh, westerly. As you all know, they move from west to east. And uh, as these move, uh, winds are moving west to east, they either create a system in Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal, and resulting in a lot of moisture flux from both the uh, basins. 
on the other hand during the northeast monsoon the winds and also the wind vectors these are the wind vectors the wind vec vectors as you can see are very strong because this is the offshoot of the somali jet the somali jet is a very strong current which is a unidirectional current uh, which brings in a lot of moisture uh, from both these basins and hence you see high wind speeds so the wind direction and wind speeds during the southwest monsoon uh, are very different uh, westerly winds and strong winds uh, in contrast, during the northeast monsoon, the winds are easterlies, northeasterly, and they are very weak. As you can see, the arrows are very small. I have shown it here during October, November, and to some extent in December as well. ITCZ uh, location, it moves up, it moves down south. Uh, as it is moving down south, it, it brings the trough down, and thereby uh, the convective activity shifts towards the southern part of India. And then one of the most important, at least in my opinion, one of the most important features that is different is the jet versus a wave. During the uh, southwest monsoon, you have the Somali jet, which is a very unidirectional feature, very distinct feature, which bring, which it's, it's like a pump, which just, which just pulls the uh, monsoon winds towards the land. Whereas a wave is something that happens, to, Northeast monsoon doesn't have a jet, right? So it has a wave. It has a tropical easterly wave. I will discuss about that wave in detail in the next few slides. But a wave is a very different feature than a jet because a wave is not a unidirectional uh, system. It is much of a dispersive system. So it is not a very strong uh, uh, current. Wave is not a strong current. It is much like a disturbance. And the disturbance uh, propagates energy away from it uh, and also along it whereas a jet will only do things along the direction okay it will not transfer the energy in any other direction that's why a lot of energy uh, through the through the jet is impinged upon the land so all the flux moisture flux that is present will all come to the land and that's why southwest monsoon is bountiful compared to northeast monsoon a wave feature is very different a disturbance can propagate up and down and it can also transfer energy uh, towards north or south of it and that's why you don't know how the energy is being transferred and that's the reason why it's very dispersive so energy can become very uh, instead of a localized energy it will be distributed energy and which is not good for a monsoon system as such and then the third fourth thing is that you have the monsoon intra-seasonal oscillation during the southwest monsoon which is the system which moves north and south bringing active and break phases uh, in a period of approximately two weeks uh, this feature is absent during the northeast monsoon season and uh, the repercussions of this I will talk about that in the later uh, slides So all of these so basically these features that I've talked about are all clean features during southwest monsoon very distinct distinct feature that you can actually pinpoint during the southwest monsoon season and These features are not very clean during the northeast monsoon season. These are these are very disordered during the northeast monsoon season and that is the precise reason why we call the northeast monsoon season to be a rogue monsoon because it doesn't have a very clean feature okay so miso or monsoon interseasonal oscillation is nothing but the progress of monsoon currents in the tropical region mostly asian subcontinent it's also known as the boreal summer interseasonal oscillation and it has a northward as well as an eastward movement and it is very active between may to october so what happens is miso moves north and south during the monsoon period bringing uh, phases of active and break phases okay uh, I have a separate video on MISO versus MJO uh, which I have put up much earlier if you want you can watch that to get more information but MISO is one of the primary reasons why southwest monsoon is highly do dominant and bountiful so I have just shown the schematic where there is a northward as well as an east eastward signature of MISO in both uh, East Indian and West Bay of Bengal branches Contrast that to an MJO. MJO is a unidirectional wave that moves along the equator. It doesn't have a northward uh, signature. It only has an eastward, uh, uh, west to east, east signature, and it moves very close to the equator. Okay, and it covers the entire globe. Whereas M MISO is a very uh, is is mostly a, a Asian phenomenon. It, it occurs only in the Asian subcontinent. Whereas Madangian oscillation is a global uh, wave. That's why the activity of suppressed and convective phases will be much longer. So MISO happens every two weeks of break and active phases, whereas MGO can bring a break phase, which can continue for 15 days, 20 days, or even a month. So that's the reason why in Northeast Monsoon can go without any rains for even a month. Whereas during Southwest Monsoon, 
there is a break of only one week, 10 days or maximum two weeks because MISO will ensure that uh, active phase will come along very quickly because it's a much more localized feature. MGO is active throughout the year, but it plays a very primary role in the controlling the weather between November to April, which is the overlap where Northeast monsoon occurs. So Northeast monsoon is completely controlled by MGO. There is no role of MISO in Northeast monsoon. This is very important. So I said that Southwest monsoon has a bearing on Northeast monsoon. The reason is because the amount of rainfall that occurs during the Southwest monsoon decides the state of the local state of the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea and those we know that Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea are the basins which drive all the monsoon season for India. So the depending on the rain that occurs during the southwest monsoon season that has a bearing on whether northeast monsoon is going to perform well or not. This is purely my personal opinion uh, and I have seen this uh, over a few years of my uh, analysis and research and the important aspect is the water flow that occurs, there is a fresh water influx from all these tributaries, Indus, Brahmaputra, Ganges tributaries and that water moves along the coast and you can see that during the December month the basin is generally colder. So if there is more uh, monsoon rains during southwest monsoon then there is going to be a lot of water flux uh, from these rivers and also there is going to be a lot of rain and Bay of Bengal will get cooled. Okay. And that will kind of maintain a dormant state for Bay of Bengal. And even if you see the October, November also, you see that compared to March, April, May, which is the summer season, very active, very uh, high temperatures. JJS obviously temperature will drop because the rains are happening, upwelling is happening due to winds. But October, November has even lower temperatures. That is the reason why the Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea branches are not uh, able to uh, develop systems on a regular basis okay uh, so depending on the amount of rainfall see rainfall tends to cool the seas uh, cool the ocean correct because it's the cool water is cooler and there is also cloudiness so that's the reason why you don't get enough solar radiation so more rains will kind of make the make the ocean a little bit more dormant and hence southwest monsoon has a bearing where if the southwest monsoon is not performing well then the northeast monsoon has a chance of performing better because the ocean state is much at a is at an elevated state the temperatures are much higher what I'm showing here is a normal is, is averaged uh, normal temperature during seasons of El Nino and during IOD events this is bound to change but this is the general norm that's what I'm showing here I hope I'm clear why southwest monsoon has a bearing East Indian coastal current also has a very strong bearing where one of the things that I would like to point is that during the monsoon season or just before the monsoon season, the East Indian coastal current moves from south to north and it leaves a very nice signature of a cyclonic or sorry anticyclonic pattern on over the ocean. These are ocean currents, not winds. The ocean current has a very strong surface ocean current has a very strong uh, clockwise movement. So this clockwise movement ensures that there is downwelling. So the temperature of water is higher because downwelling leads to warmer water temperatures and that kind of thing is even prevailing during the monsoon season where you have a clean clockwise signatures present. Contrast that, that to northeast monsoon, the EICC degenerates. I mean I cannot see any feature as such which is or I cannot see a clockwise feature. I only see anti-clockwise features which means that the water is going to be colder because anti-clockwise means cyclonic and cyclonic currents, ocean currents lead to cooler water. So this is other reason that EICC is not a very is not very clean as it was during southwest monsoon, and hence the problem with northeast monsoon is that you cannot uh, pinpoint a single feature which is saying that yes, this is something that I can uh, pinpoint and say that monsoon is going to perform well. Whereas I have multiple features for southwest monsoon like Somali jet, EICC, and also the wind patterns which create cyclonic circulations over ocean and land okay so this is EICC is not helpful again for any so the issue is that there is no permanent pool of warm water in bay like south during the southwest monsoon so what happens during NEM wind reverses and speed of winds also changes basically the winds are now uh, slower and hence the moisture flux is also going to be slow it's going to be low ITCZ moves down which is fine no Somali jet like feature 
you only have waves which are dispersive we already discussed about that dispersion is not good because they transfer energy and hence they are they are not going to bring in a lot of energy through a channel which is uh, which the jets can do east indian coast east indian coastal current moves north to south and de degenerates because it doesn't provide a very any uh, clean signature over the ocean and hence they, we don't have any clean monsoon feature and that's why we call this as a rogue monsoon the only feature that we can kind of pinpoint during northeast monsoon is a tropical easterly wave in the atmosphere what is a tropical easterly wave it is a very important feature during nem where you have an inverted v shape uh, wave bringing in convergence so you have convergence on the uh, right side of the wave as this is moving along the axis and the divergence is on the front so as this is moving from east to west you get the convergence so as in the bay if a tropical easterly is formed it will definitely come to tamil nadu andhra or much interior this tropical easterly wave occurs when a hot spot for convection is in, seen in the Bay of Bengal. See, the tropical easterly wave in Arabian Sea is not conducive for northeast monsoon because if something forms in Arabian Sea, the tropical easterly wave will, will push it to Somalia. So, when the tropical easterly wave has to form in Bay of Bengal. So, the convective hot spot has to occur in the Bay of Bengal. That is very, very important. Uh, the issue with tropical wave is we don't know we this is this is not like a Rossby wave or a Kelvin wave where it is again a Kelvin wave Rossby waves have very clean signatures like you know you can look at the maps and you can say that this is the Rossby wave and they occur year round the issue with tropical wave is they are directly tied down to the convective aspect so by only when convection occurs it will happen so IT sees it convective pattern and uh, SST the sea surface temperature all have to co come together for the easterly wave to mature into a nice inverted V shape which will ensure that there is formation of clouds and rain. Thereby the tropical easterly wave has arbitrary, lot of arbitrariness in terms of moisture convergence. Okay, so it is, it, it is a good metric but again not a very clear metric. Uh, it may, it, if it happens well and good. Models can pick it up and once you see an easterly wave pattern, the inverted V shape pattern coming towards uh, from Bay of Bengal towards the Indian coast that means that northeast monsoon rains will definitely happen over the coastal Tamil Nadu and maybe interior as well also up to Karnataka the second feature is upper air circulation this again has a lot of bearing on how the Bay is how the Bay of Bengal is or Arabian Sea is uh, cyclonic circulation uh, upper air circulation in Arabian Sea can also bring in moisture uh, in the East Arabian Sea can bring in moisture to uh, South India so uh, upper air circulation is nothing but a low pressure system which creates clouds we all know uh, low pressure uh, advects the cloud upwards and then there is a uh, divergence and uh, this loop continues okay so again the issue with upper air circulation is you need a hot spot and where that hot spot is going to occur we don't know because it all depends on the state of the bay which is again ha which has a bearing on southwest monsoon uh, seasonal pattern as well as other factors like how the ITCZ is moving down how quickly or how slowly it is moving down and those kind of things okay so once again I want to reiterate that these UAC and tropical waves are good metrics for NEM but the issue is that they are not very clean features and hence uh, northeast monsoon performance uh, is not as clean as southwest monsoon performance but these are the dynamics that I am trying to explain here these are the dynamics that one has to look for in northeast monsoon uh, during northeast monsoon season the couple of things that I want to cover is how the El Nino governs NEM. Moderate and strong ENSO years are always good for NEM. The reason is because during moderate and strong ENSO, southwest monsoon performance is poor, rainfall is less. Because of the less amount of rainfall, not much cooling happens over the bay. There is no not much upfilling. So the Bay of Bengal is always in a high elevated state of temperature, SST temperature, sea surface temperature, and hence it can produce a lot of systems. That's the reason why moderate and strong L, uh, ENSO are always good for NEM. La Nina is not conducive because during La Nina years there is a lot of rain, a lot of fresh water flux. Because of that there is a lot of mixing, cool water comes up, Bay of Bengal is in a much cooler state, not able to produce a lot of convective activity. How does IOD govern NEM? Not very clear but I have tried to explain it up to my understanding. IOD effect is a mixed bag. Neutral IOD is definitely not good for NEM because uh, again the Bay of Bengal state is not very conducive. Arabian state is also not very conducive during that period. Strong negative IOD is usually good 
because strong negative IOD will produce some systems in the southern bay which is good for northeast monsoon season. Other IOD states, so strong uh, positive IOD is also decent enough for uh, northeast monsoon because the Arabian Sea branch will be very active and that can push some systems to Bay of Bengal because uh, obviously there is a symbiotic relationship between uh, Arabian Sea and the Bay and Bay of Bengal. So that that so during strong IOD season like 2019, you may not have UAC uh, in Bay of Bengal, but you can have some uh, tropical easterly waves. Okay, so uh, during strong IOD events, tropical easterly wave takes over, and because of the Arabian Sea branch being active, northeast monsoon can also become quite active. Uh, but it will not it may be normal not during strong El Nino and strong negative IOD years NEM can be above normal but during positive IOD years strong positive IOD years it could be normal other states I am not very sure other IOD states it uh, I think I, NEM will not be very successful that is my guess or analysis so what's the final verdict NEM northeast monsoon depends mostly on the presence of easterly waves which are very erratic features they are not like jet or they are not like other waves such as Rossby or Kelvin which have very neat and clean features. It also depends on upper air circulation development which is fully tied to the presence of warm pool in the Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal that drive the convection. Due to the degeneration of VICC because in the reversal phase it moves from south to north no clear footprint of warm pool exists and hence it's a highly local phenomenon uh, which also has a bearing on the southwest monsoon seasonal behavior. Good southwest monsoon season doesn't generally bode well for northeast monsoon season. Again there could be exception I am talking about the overall scenario. There is no monsoon intra-seasonal oscillation or MISO hence active and break phases don't have a approximately two week time scale making things difficult for NEM. Uh, in comparison to southwest monsoon which is fully governed by MISO and even if you have break phases you know that it will last for 10 days uh, whereas for NEM if you have a break phase it can go on even for 15-20 days or even a month you can have a month of very low rainfall activity the reason is because NEM fully depends on MGO Madden Julian oscillation which is a global much more global factor than uh, MISO MISO is a very local factor which is tight uh, which is the southeast asian uh, subcontinent feature the, since MGO is a very global feature, the periodic occurrences of convective activities may happen even after a month. And lastly, cyclone makes things difficult because if uh, during northeast monsoon, since the wind shear is very low, cyclones can uh, develop. As they develop, they take up a lot of energy, leading to prolonged break, fa break phases. So this is the reason why northeast monsoon is very difficult, uh, not to predict. I would say it is. It is. Uh, it is a very it's a rogue monsoon because uh, you you know it's a very it's a it mixed bag you don't know what to expect it's not very difficult to predict northeast monsoon i think people have this uh, uh, mindset that southwest monsoon is easy to predict northeast monsoon is difficult to predict no all the monsoon seasons are difficult to predict because southwest monsoon has its own challenges of heavy rain periods where you have floods and you are not able to predict that because you are not able to predict the sub meso scale features to a nice extent like a vortex so none of the monsoons are easy to predict or difficult to predict so please let the let us just get that out of our mind don't depend they believe weather bloggers when they say oh NEM is very difficult blah 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 it's not true both the monsoon seasons are very difficult to pre pre predict they have their own challenges northeast monsoon the issue is that it is very erratic okay because it doesn't have any clean feature so I hope that this video gave a very uh, broad overview of what is northeast monsoon dynamics, how it is different from southwest monsoon dynamics, what are the challenges and uh, what to look for when you are trying to predict northeast monsoon. Uh, so I hope that you will look at this video uh, when the northeast monsoon season is close by and uh, uh, I hope I have uh, given something for you to brood upon and also uh, think and uh, comment uh, upon a few things. So uh, if you like this video, please share it and subscribe to my channel for regular educational video related to weather dynamics. And if you have any comments, please leave them on the comment section. Thank you so much. Have a great day.